What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, and we've got a phenomenal guest for you today. Today's guest was among the first 500 developers on iOS and has never stopped building apps. He's an expert when it comes to mobile subscriptions and how to really increase and drive more subscriptions and some counterintuitive strategies like maybe increasing the price actually increases conversions. So we're going to break it all down for you today and answer any of your questions. So make sure you leave a comment below, but let's bring on Jeff Grain. He is the co-founder and CMO at Purchase Lee. And I wish I had the video queued up. Uh, here we go. Hell Jeff, yeah. Hi, Steve. <laughs> Who doesn't so like to be little... here with you? Jeff, we both aren't wearing green. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Adrian's in I Ireland. And unfortunately, I meant to put a green sh shirt on, but I, I apologize, Adrian. But we'll have a brewski when we see you in London next week. Well, to be honest, it's 5 p.m. here. After that show, I'm going to drink some beers and, uh, and have a great St. <laughs> Patrick's. Thanks for having me, Steve. Yeah, obviously. I'm super excited to have you here. Hey, let's answer the first question that came in. Eric asked it before we even went live. Or the question is, wow. purchase Lee for indie developers or for big publishers, what's the pricing look like for that? Well, that's a tricky question. Um, uh, I, I believe that indie developers, it's for, let's say it's for developers that are already um, have built their uh, in-app subscription platforms. Uh, because what you're gonna be, you know, what you're gonna love about Purchasely is um, is that it will enable you to start doing some gross experiments. So it's more a gross tool than a build tool. Of course, we do building, we do a lot of things that you can uh, build all your stack. But when you're gonna enjoy the most out of Purchasely is when you're gonna have to start experimenting pricing, uh, experimenting uh, paywall copy, experimenting any kind of growth strategy you'd like to to do around subscriptions is where get, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna get the most out of Purchasely. So okay. it can be indie devs because we can see uh, indie devs with uh, ten thousands uh, of uh, subscribers and some big companies with lower. So it doesn't matter the. The size of company it matters more about uh, where you are right now in your subscription journey. Mm, I like it. Umi is here, and then Blake, how's it going? And then Matthew, trying to add Revue Cat to Unity, it's not working. Marwan is here as well. Hey Jeff, let's start out, kick it off with this. You know, you you mentioned a couple of different things when it comes to subscription, the whole entire funnel about pricing, adjusting paywall. Where do you typically like to start for a brand new app that has a subscription app, spent its entire time, you know, building the right features? Where do you like to start? The paywall design is a pricing. Where where do you want to start? Oh, um, well, before start, starting doing anything, uh, what I like to do is first uh, analyze the funnel uh, because this is where you're going to have a quick overview of where your business is right now, where you are performing or not, and uh, try to start small experiments that works well where you are underperforming, you know. So um, basically, I like looking at funnels. So it's good that you have analytics. So otherwise, if you plug purchase, you're going to have that uh, pretty quickly because you are, we are able to like rebuild the full history of your subscriptions. And, uh, and then we are going to well have a look at where you are underperforming and uh, start doing some small experiments because it's really important when you um, set up a new strategy, you want to improve to do small steps that works in the beginning uh, and that will give you some time to, um, well, do a deeper and uh, maybe more um, uncertain, res uncertain results uh, experiments. So this is what I like to do. So if you have, for example, the poor uh, trial to paid conversion, we have like few tips uh, and start doing a few tips around that. Or if you uh, maybe uh, struggle having people try, uh, start a trial, which is the easiest one because there's so many paywall yes. out there that uh, outperform the default paywall for st starting a trial. It's, it's, very, it's very good. So yeah, uh, identify it's your biggest pain point in your funnel and then start doing some, some experiments. I like numbers, Jeff. So let's break it down, okay? And before yeah. I tell you what my philosophy is, I want to I'll, I'll key it up to you. Trial, install the trial. What is what should we be aiming for? And then if we don't, if we aren't hitting that number, what should we be doing? 
Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I'd say it's 15%, basically. It depends, of course, if, if it's a freemium app or it's a premium oh. app. Or let's say about a freemium app, um, install. And then um, at, at least everybody should be seeing uh, at least one or two paywalls on the first, uh, on the first um, session. And uh, it should happen uh, from time to time. So intensity of uh, how much, how much, how many paywalls you are uh, about to see in your typical uh, journey is really important. But it's 15. Well, it's basically it's 15 percent. It's a good number uh, from uh, install to start a trial. This is where okay. this is where the biggest drop happens. So 15 percent seems kind of high. I mean, I've we've always talked about five to 10 percent. But are you seeing 15 percent on yeah. most of the, your subscriptions? No, not on average, of course. Uh, what the top performers okay. out there are doing is something that you can aim at. Is a uh, well, is a uh, well, ten fifteen percent is basically what we what we see on uh, on the on the top performers oh. out there. Yeah. Okay. All right. If you're not doing that, where should you start? Is it pricing, paywall design? Where? What, what do you like to start off? The simple ones, I, and I'm all about well, simple. The, 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 well, the simplest one is the the Blinkist paywall, the Blinkist template, where you um, when you start a trial, you send a notification after X days and uh, before you churn, etc. This is the easiest one. Um, you could also do um, you could also uh, play with longer long paywalls. I know that you love that, Steve. The long 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 paywall <laughs> with all the reinsurance and all the Q and As and all the videos, etc. Is something that is also good because. It shows the people that you have something uh, out there, and that's not just uh, an, anything behind a paywall. But show the product. I mean, uh, usually what we um, and show what you're gonna unlock on subscription, especially on first launch, because people don't know what to expect. Yeah, and Jeff is talking about this Blinkist model right here. Yeah, Jeff, I actually have a modification, and I'm running a few tests on this. Because I think the problem, and I know Blinkist is doing this. So one simple test that I want to run, and a friend of mine tested this. He actually put an underline on all his links. Now, this was just on the web, okay? But he put uh -huh. an underline. You remember back in the day, there used to all our links used to be underlined, and then we we're like, that's ugly. Well, he underlined all his links, and that increases click-through rate. So Yeah, but do, do you want people test? to click on that link or the, the button that you put in the bottom? Yes, and here's why. I believe in the rule of threes. And I think the problem with this is I don't know 999. Is that a good deal or not? Okay. This is why mm -hmm. I like rule of threes, long paywalls, all that stuff. Because right now you come in as a hot lead, right? Yep. You come in as a hot lead. If I see this, this seems like a great offer right now, right? So I like the rule of threes. I want more data to back this up, but I like the rule of threes. And there is some data out there already, but yes, that's the reason why I don't think that the Blinkist model is fully optimized right now. And I have- I think, I think it's three. really a matter of, uh, of location, basically, um, uh, of placement. Uh, where do you and when do you show that payable? On the onboarding, it's really important to set up the contract with your customers to tell them and what you're going to charge them, what's going to be free, what's not going to be free. And the more you tell about that, the, the most confident they feel uh, about using the app because they won't feel trapped later on when they uh, won't have the, well, when they get used to using your, um, oops, sorry. Okay. <laughs> when they get used to, um, yeah, out. it's usually the time I pick up my kids, sorry. <laughs> uh, live performance. Uh, yeah, it's so, yeah, the, the longer the paywall, the better because it set up a contract and it's also where you will develop the confidence with your, um, and, the, and the trust with your, um, with your customers. So it's really important. I really love these long paywalls. We have a, a templates that, uh, allows you to to build them uh, in a, in a matter of minutes on purchase and that they actually works pretty well. And the more precise you get in the experience, or where I want to unlock, for example, the I want to remove the watermark in my photo or whatever, this is where you'll be um, try you'll be doing shorter paywalls because people they when you already know that they have this uh, intent of purchasing and you don't want them to. Um, well, you know, uh, has themselves too many questions. You just want them to convert two offers or three offers, maybe. Uh, and there we go. And we have experiments in, uh, for example, we have a funny one. Um, let, let me check if I can just get back to results um, uh, about an A-B test uh, done recently where uh, showing a, a, lifetime, uh, a lifetime in addition of yearly and monthly uh, actually reduced the uh, average revenue per user by 33%. So sometimes adding an extra button, an extra option is an extra question that your customer is going to ask. And you don't want them to like 
ask themselves too many questions when the intention of purchasing is strong. All right. Say that one more time in the beginning. I want to make sure we yeah. hit home on it. Adding a lifetime? So, so if you have, for example, um, a paywall with a yearly and monthly and you add another option, can be weekly or lifetime. Uh, if the intention of purchasing in your, by your user is intense, I mean, they want to purchase, adding an option is adding mm -hmm. a question in their mind, is adding one more decision that they have to make. And sometimes it can lower the conversion. And we have a test like by a huge app, Uh, showing that um, a lifetime addition, the added lifetime uh, on top of yearly and monthly, and it actually reduced the uh, average the RPU by uh, 33%. So this why? is something that you need to consider. And this is kind of counterintuitive. But why? Why? W what happened? Did they buy, is, buy the monthly? Because you're adding one more choice. Adding choice I disagree. Is, I think it's worth testing, I but I, I think it... <laughs> no, I know. I know. And I have the data too. To, to prove that three plans, I can go through it, but I, I have the data that proves that three plans works better. Now, obviously, I think that's why I like discussion. I'm judging on your facial expression. You might be a little pissed off at me, but no, but no, I, that's never. why I like disagreeing with you with like, because maybe the lifetime, I, I want to know what happened. Like, I don't know what I did, what happened. Did people buy more monthly? Did people not convert? Did the overall conversions go down? That's, what, that's why I said, what happened? Sorry? Do you know what happened? What yeah, happened? But, like, is it overall conversions went down? Just what, what happened? Yeah, the basic, basically the conversion went down. Uh, the, the average revenue per paying user is basically kind of the same. So you don't have a hurt to on the, on, the, on, the, on the lifetime. And, but that's, um, well, that's something that was shown at a specific moment for unlocking a specific feature. You know, yep. and so well, but that's also what is great on this uh, on this industry also because um, you never can copy paste the recipe of one guy and just put it in your app and this will work for sure. It's just that's something cool. that's it's continuous learning and it's also basically the, for example, every fitness app has copied each other's strategies for a long time, but some fitness some different fitness apps have different behaviors because just different customers in different countries and sometimes it's, it's very different but i love this counterintuitive stuff in which you say okay let's do something and in fact it's not working as the other guys are working because just your users are very different and this is why yeah. what i like uh, like exchanging these kind of ideas and like it's never just never the same so matthew asks hey app masters how much is purchasely <laughs> another question <laughs> Just that's a good question. That's, that's, that's a good question. Um, just to look back to the very first question about uh, indie devs and small devs, uh, we are also yeah. working with starters for sure. Um, and we have specific plans uh, for starters, but uh, most of our users are um, above uh, 30,000 uh, subscribers. Uh, so it's we are between 30 and 300. You know, it's, it's where the magic happens for us. And... Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I can say the price. <laughs> Usually okay. it's a big question, well, but it's, uh, well. well, let's say it's 1,000 uh, euros per month okay. starting right. there, depending also like, on many, many things, options and uh, et cetera. But, um, well, and we are doing... Uh, something we can... Yeah. Sorry, go Sorry. ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah the, and this is, well, we have a full onboarding. We have a, a customer success. So we have a different approach than just like subscribe on a web and then uh, you're alone with your problems and issues and et cetera. So we really want to uh, make you do experiments. We help you and drive you on finding the good people to help you on a daily basis, like uh, like consultants, you know, and also our, 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 um, our consulting firms. And uh, But also we uh, we really help you on uh, working uh, on working. Uh, on your experiments, making sure that you grow your business. So it's not like something that you open up and uh, and you are alone uh, with the tools. Like this is really what our ambition is. And this is also why we, we have that kind of pricing to allow us helping you. Okay, Blake asks, maybe something we can agree on, Jeff. How many days do you recommend for trials? Oh, that's a really interesting question. I think Apple released some benchmark like globally that will be uh, more relevant by category. Um, what I uh, what, once again, we are not consultant, uh, so we we share the recipes that um, that we we see are, are working from uh, from our customers. But I think the trial duration and trial period should be set uh, for you to um, after doing some research and some uh, some. Uh, 
well, what do you want to achieve? What do you want your users to achieve um, on the, during the trial is uh, setting the duration of the trial. If you want them to achieve a specific task uh, that will last maybe, uh, that you see on average your users doing in 15 days, this is the duration, you know. Um, I can take uh, maybe two examples. Uh, Kids Locks, for example, it's a, it's a parental gate, parental control application. In a matter, in a weekend, you can test that on your kid and see if it's working or not and choose to subscribe or not. So three days duration is great. Okay. Um, we have another customer called Batchy. It's batch cooking. Batch cooking is I cook during the weekend for the whole week. If I subscribe yeah. in the middle of the week, I might be doing that next weekend, but maybe not. Uh, and I need to maybe do this twice in order to see if that works. One month is a good duration. So you need to ask yourself the question, how many times I need to offer my customers so that they develop a the beginning of a habit and they can have the chance to test the product and then set the duration for that. And if the user didn't have time to test the trial, you should offer them a second trial using WinBack or subscription offers uh, mechanism. Yeah, I want to get into that a little bit. Tell me a little bit about, about that. Have you guys seen the most effective channel for WinBacks and bringing them back in? Because sometimes I find, Jeff, that like people who cancel, it's just hard to bring them back. So what's been the most effective way to bring them back? Yeah, first of all, you need to do that um, directly when it happens, uh, because uh, mm. you have a, a small window of time in which you can get the information, send a message before they remove the app or before they whatever uh, they re well they remove the app or never never open the app again. Um, the the channels that are the most uh, wanted channels for winbacks are both push notifications and. Uh, in-app messages because you're in context and this is where you can reactivate the same subscription. Uh, of course, the mail and the, and the web um, are, um, are also important, uh, but it's really the second uh, second range uh, second range uh, needs from uh, from our customers. Um, and well, being uh, quick and efficient is really important there because you have a well a small window of time in which you can do something. Uh, in, mm -hmm. You can win back your customers. Uh, after that. Um, you need, there are two or three things that, um, that you want to try uh, to discriminate or choose the, which offer you want to offer to which customer. So may, basically you will be, uh, you will want maybe to offer a 40% or 50 or 60% discount. And a few things and the recipes that you want to put and the ingredients you want to put on this recipe will be, um, well, the, how much the user spent, the usage, whoa, again. <laughs> the usage and uh, so, so yeah sorry the um, how much the user spent because uh, if it's an extension of trial maybe they spend zero and you just want to like do three days more or one uh, one week more uh, the um, the usage of the of the user and also uh, why the why do they churn so you you can question them on why do you churn or what do you love in the product uh, are also things that uh, can help you like drive the user to uh, the good offer that will make them stay. How do you figure out, you said as quickly as possible, how do you even know that they've churned, that they canceled yeah, the trial? That's, that, this is where the magic uh, of building and uh, connecting to the, to, the, to the store is great. Um, both uh, Apple and Google, uh, Apple has um, as a S2S notification. So when the user goes to the store and unsubscribe, we are connected directly with that specific API. That is not mandatory, but we are connected directly with that specific API. We get the information. We send them through your CRM. And in a matter of seconds, depending on the CRM, usually CRM don't wow. send right away. They have a one minute, uh, a one minute delay. But uh, if you have your own in-app uh, or your own uh, push notification system, it can be done in, uh, in a matter of a few seconds. Uh, and it's the same with Google. They have a, what they call the pub sub, and we are connected uh, also. And what we do is that we send the same message, no matter it's Google or Apple, to your CRM. You can trigger your campaign and get them, uh, work and, and get them uh, back in the app. The same strategy also applies for the involuntary churn. Uh, when your credit card is, um, is, is expired, for example, uh, and we have like we have some customers who uh, every month because it's an every month problem. Every month are uh, getting back uh, six or seven thousand uh, dollars per month just with a fifteen minute setup. Uh, so it's kind of magic. Like you trigger the campaign, the campaign say, "Hey guys, uh, we couldn't charge your credit card. Make sure you won't lose your benefits, etc." Click here, it drives to the app store. Easy, thirty percent win back on the on the involuntary churn. On this customer, like uh, th this is our greatest example right now, about seven thousand dollars every month. 
Do you have a preferred CRM that you like to use? Um, no, I think the CRM is really something. Uh, we, we connect with, uh, with a lot of different CRM. Um, I think it's really, uh, in, it's really intimate to the, to the marketing team or growth team that is using it and how, how quickly they can set up the campaigns, etc. They both, well, all the, well, the Braze or, uh, or, uh, the batch one signal or, uh, our airship, they all work uh, greatly. I mean, uh, it's, I, I, I don't have a, I think it really depends also on your maturity of your team and what they are used to, 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 to do. Mm -hmm. uh, having the emailing also inside it is pretty good, but um, well, I have, I have my yeah. own personal best for my indie, uh, indie project, but because it's just, because it's free, it's uh, it's one signal. But uh, besides that, I mean, okay. for, it really depends on the, on the maturity and how your team uh, works. So, okay. And then it's sort of like connecting with one signal and, you know, a few of our clients have used customer.io and he's really liking it. So that connects with purchasely. We know when somebody cancels and that can that cancel rate is like, usually, I don't know what your industry standards are, but we've typically seen anywhere from like three to 30 to 50% be the yeah. people who activate a trial and then go on to pay. So mm -hmm. it's usually more than 50% of the people who activate a trial cancel. So it's a great opportunity for winbacks. Yeah, great opportunity for winbacks and uh, and well, the, and great opportunity for also before they they turn up. A lot of these, uh, I don't know how how much you measured, like the the one that canceled the subscription in the in the first ten minutes of the subscription, but it's a yeah. lot. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a lot. It's really a lot. Uh, and these guys, you need to work them out. I mean, you have you need to have a sequence of like every day. Say, okay, guys, it's only seven days before because. They just don't yeah. want to be charged if they don't want to. But you need to have like uh, this journey like every day sending push on messages like, okay, you still have that subscription benefits. Make sure you use them. You use it. And uh, and that sequence is really important, especially for this kind of uh, of users. And the yeah. CRM I mean, is that's really why, a, a cornerstone for this. That's what Blinkist learned, right? And that's why they were yeah. like, hey, we increased our trial conversions by 23, reduced our customer complaints, cancellations, because they learned that most people who start a trial cancel on the same day. And so by having this like little reminder, it overcomes that that fear that we all have of being charged and yeah. forgetting about it. Love it. Okay, cool. Let's say hi to a few more people. Thank you for saying hi. Hey, what's up, Patrick? Another two Patricks in a row. And then Ricardo is here. Kevin from Puerto Rico. What's up, Jose? I'm going to call you Jose, okay? And then Miguel's here. What's up, Go? Same to you, Adrian. Okay, let me see if there's any other questions. All right. What improved to, to us is just to add the purchase button right on the content, like on the Apple Fitness page. Okay, I love that. George, how's it going? We'll see you there. And then let's see. Steve, why is your camera quality always poorer than the guest? Steve, why is your camera quality always poorer than the guest? It's my stupid internet. I don't know what's going on right now. I, I'm like a hardwired too, Jeff. Like I think it's my upload speed that has to improve. Uh, I think but I think you're just an amazing host and you leave the bandwidth to your to your guests. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I see I'm getting uh, older. Okay. So like... <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I'd open it there. Okay. Okay, if you want. Okay. I've said with Purchasely, you can also use your own self crafted paywall if you want. Unity support is in their roadmap. So there you go. Yeah, I see people of my team doing the answers in the chat. It's great in case I lose oh, my good. mind in the middle of that. Oh, all right. <laughs> of that talk. Thanks, Eve. Yeah. Hey, so I guess, Jeff, you kind of talked about this when we were, when we were analyzing the entire app funnel again. When we talked about the trial activations, and then we also talked about if trial to cancel, it's these winbacks. Use everything you can with these winbacks. From the next, so is there anything else more that you want to add on that? Like besides trying to increase the trial to paying customers? Yeah, we still have some customers that don't do trials, and it's really a, a big, a big thing that leverages the the conversion. It's at least well, latest experiment on a, on one of your huge app is added a seven day trial against nothing is a is thirty thirty one percent increase. So do free trials at least test them, uh, and well, doing that extension of free trials is also important, especially for the people who had not the chance to test your um, your your subscription yet. So. 
besides that okay. there's also yeah playing on the duration maybe playing on the on the first price on android you have an, another mechanism you can do like three days free trial one year at 50 percent, and then a full year of uh, and and then the full price can also be a good mechanic but only works for well it's too bad but only works on a, on android for now yeah on and we also store. seen this to jeff where we did adding free trials because most people buy during the onboarding process, adding free trials because the client was like, I don't want to do free trials, increase 422%, 420% in sales, okay? Actual revenues. Was the, did your, did your app not, was it an AI app or was it not an AI app that increased the trials and then saw the increase in conversions? Whoa, uh, what did you, uh, what did you do right now? What right now? Oh, the big difference was there was no trial here, and there, yep. we added a seven day trial. And then what I like to do, sometimes we've seen really good results with this, sometimes we don't. And uh, this increase is on the uh, is on the the um, the LTV or the um, or, sales or the on the sales sales. Wow, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, actual money. Okay. That's what I wanted to show. Actual yeah. Money. I, lo I love that. I love that. Yeah, and it's really it's really nice because um, depending on the size of the app, of course, uh, when you have like huge apps uh, with a lot of with thousands, uh, hundred thousands of uh, of subscribers, uh, it's it's well, you don't have like these huge numbers. But when uh, when you have like smaller apps between ten and fifty thousand, uh, you have the chance to do a lot of experiments and move big stuff and uh, have uh, amazing results like that. I mean, that's a great experiment, great results, Steve um so nice to share and of course yeah we see uh these kind of uh, of results maybe not 420 percent. i need to check uh I, we have more well, than yeah. uh, like 2000, it was going from uh, zero to right something now. jeff yeah <laughs> Sorry? it was going from zero to something it was not a big app, oh, yeah. right it was barely okay. making any money and then when we added the trials finally started to make some money because we added the trials. It was like, yeah, I, no lo I, lo I love this guy. I love this somebody. kind of experiments. Uh, this, this kind of experiments for the starters is great, especially when they have mm -hmm. money to put in acquisition, because this is also where uh, you need to, well, if you want to do A-B tests, you need to have people entering the A-B tests. Otherwise, it's going to last forever until you have like some relevance uh, in your uh, in your in your test but this is where really um it's really nice when you can have some acquisition and uh and also get people inside your app and see if your experiments are are, are running well and the early days of an app of a subscription is really where you have these big gaps in con in uh, in conversion and money etc so it's great it's great experiments it's really a magical time uh later on when your business is more mature uh, i guess that for example the, the guys like duolingo or Babel, uh they don't have like this 420 percent increase but just moving one or two or three percent sometimes is a huge amount of money and uh yeah. this is also really like satisfying in a way yeah i like it you know back to our discussion jeff and i had about two products versus three products and all that stuff like all it comes down to is a b testing like what jeff said and i completely agree with don't just somebody said this to me somebody's like look calm only has one plan it's the yearly right don't just take what these big apps are doing and being like that's how you should do it it's it's app dependent you have to a b test all the time purchasely makes it really really easy for you to do that and what I would say is we have one big app that we work with and Jeff, what they did was they had a monthly and yearly option, right? Everybody's buying the yearly. It was a $10 product for a yearly. Okay. I bought it. I was like, this is easy. They removed the monthly. It was like $199 for monthly. The yearly was $10. Guess what happened when they removed the monthly? I think it lowered the conversion. Exactly. Yes, exactly. So, you know, like, you know, that's, this is why I, a B testing is so critical. And I, you know, the way, the way I see this, and this is one test we're running might be interesting to share right now. The, what the adjustment I'm making to this Blinkist model, because one of our clients has this is I think Blinkist is, let's just say 1299 under this, right? So instead of view all plans, we just put or 29 or 1299 per month. Because what I feel like having definitely two versus one is, again, you want to see where the value is. Oh, man, this is only eight bucks a month. Yeah, and I love Blinkist. Like, I want to learn about it because this is a warm lead. I, so all we did was I was like, hey, if they tap on this, show the normal, you know, Blinkist where it's view all plans. But have that change view all plans to or 
39 or whatever it is, 1399 a month. And we're going to see what happens because that's the smallest change we can make just to see if that increases conversions or not. Yeah, I, I believe we also, yeah, also co copy the what the greatest actors are doing out there, but they have a brand, they have a community, they have exactly. trust around their subscription. I mean, it's different from everybody. Uh, there's also something that is um, unconsidered or not enough considered is how much money you can do outside of the US. I mean, everybody is really focusing on the US, but it's really an expensive market. Uh, and stores are global. There's low-hanging fruits doing business in Turkey, in Australia, in India, uh, in Asia. Well, so and doing some translation on the store, um, do, localization is better, uh, is, is really something that you, can, um, that you can do and that can also help you grow uh, in an easier way because there's low competition on these markets. Yeah, I completely and agree. That usually goes through uh, price testing also because the, the, um, well, the, these, these other markets, they don't have the same uh, power of, um, of consumption, uh, they don't have the same means and they won't, wouldn't spend as much as American, but do some price testing and launch in other markets is really a way of uh, having easy growth um, that, uh, that, can, uh, that can also change stuff in your, your business model. Completely agree with that. Krishna says, hi, Jeff and Steve. Purchase Lee is working great for us. There you go. Ah, awesome. thanks. We love Autism, Krishna. Krishna. Yeah, I, I actually, I have, I have a fun story about about Krishna. Yeah, it was the first okay. time that I, I've been to the U.S. since COVID, and we we were we we were created just between in in the time of COVID, and uh, oh, I was going to I was going back from WWDC uh, last WWDC of of Apple. I was going back to MAU Vegas. I was in the plane. I was wearing the same hoodie, and Krishna was just right behind me. Say, are you working for Purchase? I was like, what? Uh, yes, so first time I was really not expecting someone to even know us or uh, like we are not YouTube, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, I say, oh, because I am a customer. So I almost know all of our customers. It was just signed, I think, a few uh, few days or weeks before. I didn't wasn't mm -hmm. aware of it. It's, the first time I was saying to myself, like, well, this company is way bigger than uh, than anything I've done before. It's going to be even greater. But really great impression. And we spent an hour and a half, like uh, in a, maybe an hour or an hour and a half uh, from uh, from San Jose to uh, to Vegas discussing uh, how to grow the business for the Zen. So hi, Krishna. It's really a pleasure to see you there. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it's good to see him too. All right, Jeff. Well, we will save some questions. If you guys got more questions, just leave in the comments. But we'll go into the app audit portion of our show. And if you guys want us to take a look at your app on a future live stream, just go to appmasters.com slash audit appmasters.com slash audit. And Jeff, we start off every app audit with some dad jokes. All right, my friend, you're the guest. So you want to go first or you want me to go first? Nah, I'm going first. Uh, I'm <laughs> afraid you steal my jokes because it's in Patrick. So um, how do you walk across Dublin without passing any pubs? How? You stop at each one. Cheers to you. <laughs> I like it. Uh, that's funny. All right, which one do I want to go here? I know, I try to find some things. Okay, Jeff. I received a flyer on anger management the other day. I completely lost it. <laughs> All right. Nice. <laughs> um... All right, but... Put J if you thought Jeff's joke was better, and then put S if you thought my joke was better, and we'll play for a beer at APS in London next week. Okay. How about that, Jeff? Yeah. Okay. I go non-alcoholic, though, my friend. Okay, so just keep that in mind. We'll have to find <laughs> a non-alcoholic one. Okay. All right, we got Ronnie's app. He wants ASO and conversion performance, so I'm going to pull up his app in a bit. The ASO side of things looks like it's pretty well optimized. It's a create subtitles, captions automatically. So that looks good. You know, one of the things I always like to look at from an ASO perspective. Anything on the App Store presence, Jeff, that you want to highlight? If you like, yeah, this yeah. I th I think it's too bad because this uh, video, this app is about video and subtitling, and it's something that you want to sell for. Like, it's easy to be done. There definitely should be uh, at least one or two videos showing one it, how it works and how it looks uh, for the rendering. Um, yeah. So it's too bad that we cannot see that right from the store. Yeah, that would be interesting to have too. I think AB, we have to A-B test video because sometimes videos like decrease conversion. So you should A-B test the video side. Sometimes it helps. And so it's really just A-B testing that. Yeah, that I think I like it so far. I think I want to see the different styles of the captions more prominently versus 
what you currently have because you know like for me as somebody who creates content i want cool looking captions and i know you say edit and customize captions but it might almost be cooler to show the different type of captions that are very popular on instagram tiktok and all that stuff so uh, especially because these captions are mostly for pros afterwards but we're going to see mm -hmm. that when you download the app yeah and if you're just starting out like Jeff, what would you say, like, how many months should you just really, you, you know, obviously you took time to build this app. You think you have all the right features. How much time do you feel like you should give, or maybe it's not time, it's a revenue mark to really test the trial activations? The trial activations? Um, I think it's like brushing. I think all the, um, all these growth uh, tactics and uh, improving the funnel is a, uh, is a daily, uh, is, is a daily, not a daily stuff, but it's like brushing your teeth. Yeah. You know, it's something you should, it's like, it's like 10 minutes a day that you should be doing every day. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's really never ending. It's always, it's always testing, you know? Uh, yeah. Well, even Blinkist is still like everybody's copying them and they showed a great result but uh, they don't stop on improving and this is really something that uh, we wanted to bring out to everyone it's like the this ability of doing some tests on paywalls that are usually hard because it's hard to develop it's uh, it's because you have to re-release the app and we also wanted it to make it in a great way like it's native paywalls etc um mm -hmm. but uh, so that everybody can test it without spending hours so yeah. You should be testing all the time, like you do for your app store pages, like you do for your uh, your UA user acquisition campaigns, etc. It's something that you should be trying, but like also time boxing because we are aware a lot of people don't have like forty or fifty people working on their uh, conversion team. So, you know, one of the things I say is like stop focusing on product, especially if you're let's say under. Let's throw a number out, like five to 10 grand. If you're underneath that five grand a month, your product is probably good. You spent this much time building it. It's live in the app store, right? Focus on downloads. If you don't have any, then focus on conversions. And that is it. Like number one thing, stop trying to add more features. Adding more features is not going to make anything just like click and go. So yeah. Anyways. Yeah, you can you make agree with that, Jeff, or you feel free to disagree. No, 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 I totally agree. You can, yeah, a lot of people can just uh, convert on a, on simple features. I, I'm still am amazed by how many people can uh, purchase for a QR code application. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I see the, the craziest apps making a lot of money these days. So I'm like, the market's still big. And we just recently launched, we helped the client launch a, you know, sort of like a chat GPT app, but a little bit different spin. But, you know, it's the first week, 700 bucks. ASO, we did the ASO for him. We're ranking number one for a certain keyword. It's like, it shows you the power of like really studying the market and understanding what you need. And then now it's just like, that's the beginning, right? We're, we know we're getting conversions. We know we're ranking, we're getting downloads. Now it's like, okay, let's spin it. Let's try to scale this a little bit more. Okay, now speaking on the ASO totally side agree. of things, Spanish Mexico indexes by the US App Store. What I would do, Ronnie, is maybe go after captions for talking videos, subtitle captions for videos. I don't know if these are like in-app events, but do that because I think captions for videos, the problem is captions is probably really competitive because it's the number one keyword that I'm finding in this niche. And so I might want to try something a little bit different. And I know you're going for auto cap here, but you really don't need vid cap one more time in the Spanish Mexico, like really go all in on the Spanish Mo Mexico localization because it is an X by the US app store and just like focus on the main keywords that you want to figure out. Now, I don't have the actual difficulty scores for these keywords. I only know the traffic, but what I've learned from the traffic scores is you wanna be as close to 30 as possible. If you can rank number one for keywords that are two keywords, and this is from our data, we rank number one for two keywords with a search score of around 30, it's a six figure business, easy. So that's what I would try to aim for. And that's what we did with this other app. It, we found these two keywords that were around the 30. We got them to be number one and we're getting organically 70 to 100 downloads a day. Just being number one for that keyword. So, all right. Okay, let's get into the app itself. All right, Jeff, you ready? Let me see. Let me take out the thing. What do you use to study the market? These tools, you know, like I like AS, I like app follow and I like to look at their, their keyword suggestions. That's what I do. 
when you study the market, you look at the top charts, you can do, do it at data.ai, you go to purchase lead to see whether popular paywalls, but yeah, that's, that's how you study the market. Just download a lot of apps, look at a lot of paywalls. Let me just make sure there's nothing, nothing behind this. All right, cool. Ready for the app. Uh, where is the app? Video. All right, I'll let you lead. Yeah. So, um, the first page, by the way. this is my first time uh -oh. using the app. Yeah, that's. Um, I, I like uh, the fact that you can display um, first of all the contract, etc. I just feel like for a video application, it's still lacking of something to show your app in action. Okay, it really looks like a, a default app store um, a paywall here. Um, it's well not very colorful, and I think that these apps they uh, are targeting influencers, etc. So they are maybe doing something more fancy. I'll try doing a paywall, showing the app in action, showing some motion, etc. Um, but well, um, when you and, and especially when you close that paywall, there's no specific onboarding. So I think the the, the day zero and very first experience is a, a bit poor. Um, it's a bit poor in terms of, of emotion, you know, and, uh, and knowing what you're going to purchase right here. There's no unburning. Um, and, uh, well. Jeff, I really want that, you to connect. I really want you to connect me with your client that did the lifetime offer so I can dissect yeah. it. <laughs> I can, I'll do I it for can, free. Off, off, off the record. <laughs> off the record. Okay. Off the record. Sure. All right. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I, I see this lifetime. Course. But yeah, they do the last thing. And I think it's it's pretty... Uh, and by the way, uh, have you noticed that all these dating apps, they are, what they are doing is usually they put the one year in the middle, six months on the left, and the one month on the right, you know, so that you yep, yep. struggle finding the one month. Uh, it, it's yes. really fun. And also, of course, having three or uh, three plans or more, because uh, if you, there's also this uh, carousel of offers right now, uh, offers you the great opportunity of like uh, do, doing poison picking, which works pretty well. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I was just saying, like these these kind of uh, of counterintuitive experiments also work, and uh, you you shouldn't yeah. take anything for granted, you know. Like it's, it's it's not because it works for others that it will be working for you. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like don't you know test for yourself. Like we may Jeff and I may be saying certain things, but it might not work for you versus working for other people. All right, one thing I will say is. Ronnie, you have not been paying attention to anything that I've been saying. Somebody's in here. The number one tip, the no, number two tip, number one tip is have your paywall doing onboarding. Number two tip, I didn't think I needed to have this in the slide, Jeff, is have an onboarding process. Like remind users what the hell this app does. And especially if you're a captions app, I want to see the captions. I want to see cool captions. And so your first yeah. couple of screens, your video app, like you can show off caption caption you know the different styles of captions on the second screen so automatically create captions you know different link you know here are the different styles of captions here's a number of languages supported and then boom show the paywall Run. yeah it will show it the and, and the app does a pretty good job by the way so it's 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 uh, it's it's a, it's a pity that you yeah. don't see it in action and you have to experience it yourself um when i opened the app on the first time i thought that I would have a hard pay, a paywall and then some mm. like kind of onboarding with another paywall with maybe a discount on the second paywall. I don't know. But mm. it's just like you close the paywall and there's nothing else. So it's, yeah. well, it's a little bit too bad. Yeah. Especially and because the app does a great job. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I like everything else. And we've actually seen somebody told me too in our audience he was he has a video type of app and having video does did increase conversions and so your video app ronnie show me the, the captions show me the cool captions on this paywall like add a video on here okay well and i have a one doubt on the th try three days for free right there um mm -hmm. might not pass every app store validator out there because you don't show up the price so each time you have a button, you should like be displaying the full price. So if I have to scroll yeah. down to see what I'm committing to, which is not even the case, yeah. if this try three days for free, and I think it's the case only uh, triggers the App Store uh, purchasing cheats, like this is not compliance. Yeah, so this is not compliance. So it might have passed once, but uh, at some point, I don't uh, like you're it. Gonna some rejection. It almost feels like 
because it was defaulted to a month. It almost feels shady to me not having like, yeah, it's, all the prices. Yeah, it's really dark Python. Yeah. Well, so, great it's Python. It's Well, it, it won't pass App Store validation at some point. So, And this is where, what happens right after the first launch. Uh, and once again, I would have loved to dare to have some kind of onboarding showing me the app, etc. Of course, the big CTA, I can pick a video. I did some tests last night about this it's a uh, doing some uh, and the app works great but um it's just too bad you don't show this before especially because i'm yeah. poor at creating stuff and uh, i would have loved like to see what great people do with your great app instead of what i will experience with my uh poor uh design and uh, and creative capabilities you know all right here's what i think is going to happen when i hit pick a video it's going to ask for access to the It's going to get access to my... Oh, it already has access. That's crazy. Pick from photos. How do you already have access? That's crazy. <laughs> That's weird. I didn't give it access. Really? I, yeah. Even in the past? Maybe you've downloaded the app like a uh, year Maybe. or two ago. That's crazy. That's, a, that's a really crazy. I don't know if Ronnie is in did here. For me. But it we'll, did for me yesterday. Obviously. Okay. Well, the thing I wanted to point out was one of our video clients, and I was wrong, so I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong. One of our video clients we had was, I said, ask for that photo video after the paywall, okay? And we did it. It performed lower than asking it before the paywall. So he had an onboarding process. And during the onboarding process, he asked for access to the photos and videos, right? And then he showed the paywall. That's how he normally did it. I told him to flip it, show the paywall, then ask for all that stuff. I was wrong. He was right. And so I think that's what I would do, do, do Ronnie, is add have an onboarding sequence during that onboarding sequence ask for access to those photos and videos and then show the paywall and it should increase your conversions the other thing that's missing is how do i upgrade on the screen so let me you want to have the number two spot that people pay for you i'm glad this second open shows a paywall but number two spot that people buy on is a home page pay button don't hide it under the settings you have so much space. Put Upgrade to Pro right here on the very top. You have so much thinking space. Yeah, all this stuff. Let's see. Jeff is the most amazing guest I've ever had on. Yeah, make sure to send me that video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, generate subtitles. Let's see what happens. How do I hit play? <laughs> I can't even hit play, Jeff. Oh, there you go. Oh, it did work decently yesterday for me. All right. Export. So Let's then see what you happens. get the, the little pro on the lower right corner. Mm -hmm. um, you also have there some icons where pro is important, etc. So you are expecting to see uh, some kind of paywalls at some point when tapping on this. So it's pretty good. Uh, but the icons on the um, on the previous screen wasn't like uh, really expressive. So you don't know what to expect when pressing that button. So you kind of will be avoiding it. Um, and uh, yeah, share was complete. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You send it to me. I like it. The... <laughs> I will share it to you here. Yeah share to instagram and <laughs> uh all right i like it i think you know i would have wa remove watermark down here too uh -huh. right? but if you try to press on the, the cross bit cap it will show a paywall i you know, know but to, i still would yeah. rather have more because it's so tiny up here that mm -hmm. i'd still rather just my eyes going to go down here anyways because i want to save it and so when I was hit save, you know, it asked me for that access finally. And that's where you want to do during the onboarding process. We have seen an increase in conversions. Again, A-B test, but that's what we've seen with one of our clients. Okay. So far, so good. All right. Right again, you, you know, a way to upgrade right here. Upgrade to pro or remove watermark, lead with the benefit, remove watermark, or, you know, get extra captions, whatever the benefit is to upgrade in pro. That's what you want to add on here, Ronnie. 
they, they yeah, spent so much only time two videos money. or something like that also yeah. like i think there's a limitation on the number of videos that you can do or generation that you can do having a counter to show you how much how many how many videos you can get uh how many subtitles or translation you can get is really important also yeah, I think gonna, there's a typo on the table. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you see the 2K monthly users, users? That's a lot of users there. <laughs> it's not for the users. It's a typo. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you don't have to republish an app for just changing that typo, but uh, there's a typo. And I, I love that when you subscribe, there's a confet confetti or, you know, it's, it's sparkling uh, all over the place mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you have the chance to make a subscription. So it's, it's pretty good. And uh, and when you unlock, there's one uh, one thing that I believe is a is a um, but maybe you have you have some figures about that. Uh, but there's one thing is that when you unlock the pro features, you no longer know which pro features were pro, you know. And I think it's good oh, to always remember what are the values. Like if you hadn't purchased the pro uh, the pro feature, you wouldn't know this would be pro. And uh, and it's always good to remember that this is a pro feature you wouldn't have if you hadn't uh, subscribed to the to the yeah, pro feature. That's a great idea, actually. Keep this pro like, level. You're saying this pro goes away? Yeah. That's a yeah, great idea. Yeah, this pro goes away that. when you when you subscribe. Yeah. I love that Which idea. Which I did. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. That's a, that's a great idea. Okay. Hey, Jeff, if you had to distill it to just one, what do you think is like the biggest mistake that developers make when they're trying to monetize a subscription app? Well, I think they, they don't test enough. I think they really don't test enough. Uh, they copy a lot, don't test enough. Um, they also, when, when you do a, a small improvement at some place, it can have other, con it's a butterfly. It can be a butterfly effect. It can have some consequences in other places of the app. So oversee the full funnel. And I'm not saying about just the funnel that we as a subscription platform are talking about, but how it impacts your, um, maybe your ratings on the store, et cetera. So oversee the full funnel. Uh, from acquisition, conversion, retention, etc., and not only the subscription KPIs, uh, because uh, well, uh, especially for freemium application, because you want people to stay in the app because they might convert later on, and not only on day one. So, in increasing the pressure on paywalls will have some impacts, of course, on conversion, but also on the retention of uh, your uh, your users. So. Um, be sure to oversee uh, the, this full funnel and how the, um, the KPIs and all the KPIs are moving when you're doing some tests. And when you did some tests, just it's good sometimes to get back to this past test and see how the cohorts evolve because you might have some surprises like, okay, I, I, I saw that in the first 15 days I have this cancellation rate so I can think this is uh, the, the LTV, but sometimes it might surprise and some, it might be surprising. And going back to some tests you made uh, six months or a year ago is also a good thing because, um, well, people or the, the conversion and numbers might have turned in different ways than you have had expected after two or three weeks. Yeah, I like it. Great one. That was a great job, Jeff. I love that answer. Clip that Thanks. up for social media, you know what I mean? That was, that was really good. I got to send you. Maybe you are becoming the... Well, oh, basically, it's not me. I mean, I, I get all these ideas from a lot of people we're working with because, as I said, we're not consultants and working with great minds and great people that we allow them to do these kind of experiments and make the, these kind of feedbacks to us, you know? Yeah, same. That's why I love what I do. I get data from all yeah. points. Okay, round two. Sorry, we only got one vote. Ricardo voted for me, Jeff. So you're down one round. Let's go into round two of the dad jokes. I apologize. We need more... But somebody did say, look, Patrick said, look, can't choose bo between them, like both jokes. Love so, you, Patrick. All right, Jeff, you want to go round two? You want to go first or you want me to go first? Oh, go first. Okay. <laughs> I live with that one. Okay, Jeff. Uh, let me change the... Spring is here. I got so excited, I wet my plants. <laughs> okay. Nice. I'm a garden guy. I love this one. And I'm sure that Eve uh, also loved this one if you're still in the chat. Um, hmm. Uh, hesitating. Uh... <laughs> well, do you know why did Han Solo refuse to eat the steak? Who refuses to eat the steak? Han Solo. Han Solo? Yeah. Han Solo? Yeah, why? from Star Wars. Oh, oh, Han Solo. Okay, got it. Uh, sorry, I'm French. Right. Still got it accents. Okay. You know why he refused to eat his steak? Uh, it why? was chewy. 
Oh, well, that's that's probably gonna win. Okay, that's probably gonna win. I like that. Uh, Owen says, "How do you track downstream performance of product page optimization on the App Store?" Oh, that's a good one. Um, that's a really good one. Yeah. Um, uh, you mean on the on the on the conversion and how much it improves the conversion, or yeah, yeah. probably. Um, that's that's something. Uh, uh, honestly, I was really pumped when I saw the product page optimization and uh, product page testing on the App Store coming in, etc. I had high expectation. I would have loved, you know, to have this uh, ability to um, have a creative on the App Store and drive the user to the same kind of context uh, when he opens the app on the paywall and all the onboarding experience to have a seamless uh, experience. But unfortunately, that's not possible because they don't give you which creative made you uh, download the app which is which is uh, uh, such a shame i can understand that on the on the privacy perspective because you don't want to give too much context on the on the on the on the, on the product page that helped and on, on the user but it's a, it's a shame because if you look at the other uh, stuff that apple launched at the same time of these product pages which are the in-app events in-app events is a great way of keeping that context you have that context of you converted with this in-app event and then you can create the same uh, atmosphere or the same uh, the, the same uh, onboarding experience um, knowing why the customer downloaded uh, your app in the first place so um, I don't have any answer on this but maybe Steve you get an answer on the on the on that one uh, and I know that uh, I tested the beta version and that we tested it we uh, we looked at the documentation and uh, all the uh, iOS apis and we, I, I think I have a ticket on Radar, a uh, feedback assistant, sorry, uh, on Apple, uh, asking them to uh, to give us um, the um, the product page ID so that we can recreate the same uh, the same uh, seamless experience from creative from uh, well from store to uh, to the app. But it's uh, to my uh, knowledge not possible right now. Yeah, I don't think it's possible right now. That's the answer. And oh, Jeff, I don't know if it matters. That's my initial hunch. You know, I know it matters for creatives, you know, on Facebook and what you're saying to them, but I don't know if it matters when you get to the app store. Like you just want them to download and install. So unless you're making some crazy claims, like maybe leading with a certain topic, that might be important, but maybe it's just getting too micro into details. Unless you're a big company, I don't know yeah, if that's it matters. That's that's a guess. Uh, that's a guess. I would guess that, guess. for example, you're doing um, you know a fitness app, and you have um, you have people that are trying to uh, gain muscle mass, other ones that are trying to uh, I don't know lose weight, etc. And if you convert them on the payroll on the app store with a with a claim for uh, like gaining muscle mass, you want yeah. them you don't want them to show them uh, lose uh, lose weight uh, on your first onboarding experience. You can directly uh, nail it, and I think that being uh, really precise on the very first onboarding experience makes a huge impression when you download the app. Like these guys, they know me and you can increase the, um, I, I believe, and once again, it's a guess, uh, you can increase the uh, the conversion because the user will uh, have the feeling that well, these guys, they know me, they are trustworthy. Yeah, I like it. Angelina, good to see you. And then I know Rudy joined late. Sorry, Rudy. Yes, there was a time change on our end. So, oh, damn, the time zone shifted again. I'm sorry. It did shift. And I did want to point out one other. Miguel, here, <laughs> my favorite hour of the week. Thank you, Miguel. Good to see you. All right. I think I'm, I don't even know. Uh, they seem to do, Christian said they seem to do it for product page ID for App Store ads. Okay. Maybe you need like an apps flyer or some type of integration to see all that data. Yeah, let's test okay. that out, Krishna. Yeah, let's test it out. Uh, let's get into Jeff. You might like this. Thomas is in France. Like his link to me, the default was France. Oh, yeah. oh nice, Martin's. nice. I didn't know that. Um, didn't didn't know that. Love the app, by the way. Same. I yeah. tested it. Many many things to say. Uh, I think the, the great great work on the well. The app looks gorgeous from the store. Love the colors, etc. It really looks like uh, any kind of financial application you you would expect, like with dark background from the start, and uh, these uh, these shiny colors make that great work on the great work on the on the on the screenshot, I believe. Yeah, and I think well, with from an ASO perspective, like crypto tracker, super important. You know, I don't know if it's different 
in French, but like maybe localize it. I mean, you sent me a French default French link. So Thomas, like maybe localize it in your in your native language yeah. if you want to do that. Like if that's what you're Hopefully you're Hopefully it works in French too. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll move to the US market. But I know crypto tracker, so he did change the crypto tracker is the main thing. So you might just want to change it to crypto tracker the rather than crypto market. I don't know. I would prefer to just lead with, if I'm just starting out, forget the brand, lead with the main keyword that I'm trying to go after. Crypto attacker is a good keyword to go after. So he has portfolio on the other one. I love the video from the start, you know? But one month, yeah. Months. Yeah. Okay, let's get into the app. Do, 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 do. Okay. Oh, the Apple logo. <laughs> Where? There we have an onboarding. Yay. I think it's too much text though, but it's cool. That's it, you keep saying welcome to it instead of like leading with the, what's the big headline? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like welcome to, okay, I know. Thank you for the welcome, but like I'm not your house guest. Just be like track your yeah, crypto that, that, currency, get alerts when you fall too much, whatever. You know what? It's the main benefit. Yeah, it's, and same thing that I think your iPhone is never asking you for any kind of not, uh, authorization. But uh, when I launched the app, the first thing that I was asked is to um, accept the notification. Yeah, so I think that's yeah, it, well, explain that a little too. bit why uh, why I should <laughs> why I should activate the notification because it's really like uh, well, it's really totally understandable when you want to send notifications when there is a crypto crash or whatever, but uh, maybe giving the users a little bit of context is better and it's a better welcoming experience if you do put that in the onboarding. You know, Same for the creation of the account. Explain why you oh. want to create the account, you know? Yeah, I love the push notification topic because I don't, I have the screenshot somewhere that I have to put together. You know, I have all these slides from everywhere because every time I see something cool, I'm like, put it in the slide, put it in the presentation. But the be real, <laughs> Push notification, I feel like, yeah. is really well done, Jeff. Have you seen the Be Real one? Uh, wow, I installed Be Real, uh, I think, a year or two ago. So at the very beginning, Never I don't it. remember it. <laughs> yeah, let me see if I can grab it while we're talking because I loved it and I took a screenshot. I was like, this is and one of the Zenly, best Zenly, uh, Zenly, the, it's another French company acquired by Snapchat. Zenly, it's like finding your friends nearby. Uh, they but they shut down the company uh, pretty recently, but they done an amazing job for accepting the like faking the notification screen, and you could like like we are going to see you're going to see this. Make sure you press on this one. That was that was amazing. Yeah. I, I really loved it. If you can find it in uh, in uh, in the internet archives, the, the onboarding was great. Yeah, here's the B reel. I found it. Yeah, nice. This B reel. This is how B reel will notify uh, you. Click on the notification to be the first to know, and then like it then ask for like the push notification. I believe I have to nice. reinstall it, install it, and then I'll, I'll break it down for everybody. Smart move, really like nice smart guys. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, let's see. Start trial now, but I don't know what the trial period is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm assuming it's seven days, but like you don't have it on here. And then now there's no trial. <laughs> no trial. I do like That's... this though, Jeff. But I don't. <laughs> I wouldn't show this. I would only show this to those who activated a shot trial. I wouldn't show this right after this because I'm more inclined to give you a one star review. Yeah, for sure. This. So for sure, I won't. I won't give it to you. But yeah, uh, I love this messaging. A bit, a bit of a dark pattern we here. Uh, yeah, the, the, the 20 people went pro this week. I uh, like it too. It's uh, kind of a reinsurance stuff, even though the 20 seems a little low. One thing I do like, and I saw another app do this, is this sliding thing versus an X. So, you know, you talked about a hard paywall, which essentially means no X, pay or get out. Uh -huh. And I love that strategy, especially for beginning apps, because you want to get feedback, you want to test conversions, you want to test price points, and what better way than just making it a hard paywall. And the way that I do this, I would remove the X here. And then I would just change the background, change the colors a little bit so that the sophisticated person knows to get out of this paywall, you just have to slide down, right? Huh? But maybe the non-sophisticated yeah. people will know that won't know anything and they just have to pay. So that might be yeah. a nice little semi-soft paywall. Yeah, I love that. I have two alternatives to offer on this one. Um, yeah. You can also hide a small close button, uh, 
below the subscription ones. And yeah. uh, the last one um, is also Oops. like to show the, the X after few seconds, like two, three, four, five seconds. Yeah. Like you have in too. ads, you know? Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, we've seen definitely that work too. And then what I've told other people is like, it says remove ads, right? So when I hit an X, go and pop an ad. Like it's fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? I knowingly, maybe you don't want to do it on first open, yeah. but maybe the second open, like just do that. You said <laughs> Remove ads, and you don't want to remove ads. So uh, you, uh, you know how to generate frustration. <laughs> That's a uh, great one. You got to make it hard. You know, sometimes people won't pay because they don't want to pay. And if you don't make it hard for them, they won't pay. One last thing that will instantly increase your revenues is flip it right now. And I have one client do exactly this, Jeff. Here, let me pull up the. Let me pull up my slides. I'm all about slides. I oh, mean, this is like, there's a paywall behind these slides I'm about to show you. So pay attention. We're going to end it strong here. Okay. So this app does, it's so Jeff, the, the trial is on the monthly, by the way. Okay. Three days free for on the monthly. Okay. okay. But when I go yearly, this is lame. Don't do that. When I go yearly, there's no trial. Okay. Oh, it's a here we go, Thomas. Oh, it's not a plan picker. Okay. It's dumb. Yeah. Okay. So it fixed that. Here's what our, one of our clients did the exact same thing, right? No trial on the yearly, three day trials on the monthly. Guess what everybody was buying? The uh, monthly. Okay. Uh, Spoiler course. alert. Okay. Uh, you, so you, what we did, uh, what? Well, you, usually people are putting the trial on the yearly. Not on the I monthly. know. That's why I'm like, this is why sometimes this is why I love doing this job, right? Like sometimes we see the funkiest things and we added seven day trial to the yearly, right? That's the only change. Seven days free. It had no trial mm -hmm. before. So this was a, this is B and then 70% increase in conversions, 46% increase in revenue per download. Boom. Whoa. Just that simple change. So Thomas, you're welcome. You owe me a beer. That's all you got to do right now. Add the seven day trial to the the yearly, and you know we also found is just make it an even number. I know you're in France, so like the the conversion looks weird in the U.S. But if U.S. is a big market for you, just make it twenty nine ninety nine. We do have data from other clients that say when I have some funky number rather than a round number, the round number wins over the funky number. So. Yeah, other um, as as is in a crypto crypto world, I, I had a chance to discuss with I, I'm sure you know uh, Vay Bagdasian uh, from CoinStats, and uh, mm -hmm. and these guys they made experiments of increasing the price up like to uh, about I think they multiplied the price by two, didn't change the conversion rate. Wow. Yeah, just because wow. at some point when you're doing crypto, if it's too yeah. low, it's not serious, you know. Yeah. Uh, same for the um, the parental control application. I mean, it's it's too cheap. Like people yeah. would think it's shitty. And yeah. increasing the price is same counterintuitive. Sometimes yeah. works just like it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Uh, it looks like, oh, Thomas is here. Pro Thomas is there's a problem on the annual. It should offer, it was, should not offer the trial only for the monthly. Okay. But switch it, Thomas. So, like, this is why I like two plans, right? And I like three plans, but switch it. Like, there's a benefit. Now, if you're a crypto guy, you probably can afford it like golf. So we've even tried one client we did. They had a 30 day trial on the monthly and that was their only offering. Thomas, we added the yearly for like 60 bucks. We made it a seven day trial and the monthly had no trial. And then we boosted up annual re or monthly revenues from like 15 to 24,000, like 200% increase in re the monthly revenues after that. So I like to show, again, this is why I like having multiple options, not just one option, it's to show the value. And you can see the value because you're in seven day trials. Now, with the other app that we did, this went from like everybody buying monthly to now everybody buying yearly, right? This app, because of the yearly price, I feel like this was a pretty even split. Some people were buying the monthly. I thought everybody would buy the yearly, but I was wrong. But there was a pretty like a 60 40 even split, even though the, the year you had a longer trial. So I think it depends. Like this is back to our point about A-B testing. I think in, the, in, people, in people's minds, they try to multiply multiply by 10 and see, well, okay, it's one or two months. And maybe going under the 10, you know, it's like from one month to one year, they don't multiply by 12, but by 10 and see, okay, the 
the, the, the save is not that big. Mm. Maybe it's that, you know? That's a good point. I like it. That's a good point. And this does say three months. That's a, that's a really good point. Like, yeah, maybe jack this up to 499 and then show like safe X amount of percentage. Do we have this? Yeah, yeah save 44% right there. Yeah, that's a great point. I like that, Jeff. Love it. Okay, Thomas, that's it, man. Good luck. Keep us posted. And Once Thomas, again, guys, I have a lot of feedback. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. If you're in Paris, I'm, I'd be happy to to see you around. And uh, if you, I have a lot of feedback, but we didn't have the chance to go through because the show has a timing. <laughs> and uh, but great job, uh, great job so far. Well, I mean, what is it? Guys, go ahead. Showing the app is never easy, right, Steve? Showing no, your it's app. Not. Thank you everybody. for doing that. Yeah. What, what's the feedback? What do you want to say? Yeah, I had other feedback on. Uh, I think he asked us a question about how, um, how if I need to try a subscription right now, and I was totally free before. Uh, what should I do, etc.? Uh, I think it's always a question when uh, you start like you try to engage people into a free product, and you add later on your premium features. Uh, what should I put for free, etc.? It's really uh, it's mm -hmm. really something that is uh, can be complicated. So uh, passing free feature to paid, uh, for example, uh, you should be consider considering like. Uh, maybe offering these features for the existing customers or maybe for a limited amount of time or maybe triggering a six months or three months or two months for free uh, to some heavy hardcore user, you know. Um, because at the end of the day, if you crash your reviews, uh, especially if you're doing a crypto, uh, a crypto app, it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be well, poorly perceived directly from the store. So make sure that uh, you, you, you do that correctly. And... Um, and I, I really like, and we didn't see uh, inside uh, inside the demo, but there's a full onboarding. Like, here's what you're gonna have. You can do this here, etc. The great tutorial on the home page, uh, and maybe what I would do is uh, the the account creation. Uh, same on the account creation. You don't explain what are the what I'm going to be able to do, and there is no suggestion on the iCloud keychain thing, etc. So creating the account for your app is pretty. Complicated. I mean, I would have loved to have a sign in with Apple feature, maybe, or at least um, tag the email and the password so that it's pre filled, you know, um, which is not the case when you, when you do that. Uh, well, there's a few things like that. So, but I think it's, uh, it's already a great and nicely uh, version and product uh, so far. So keep up, uh, keep up the good work and uh, hopefully you, we're going to discuss and, uh, and uh, and see how great you're doing. So, yeah, it is designed with love in Paris. Everything oh, love is it. made with love in Paris. Right? Maybe we're neighbors yeah. and we don't even know it. There you go. You want to give out your home? Reach out to me, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing around. All right. One other thing I'll add too is Thomas. You know, on every open, you should add the paywall. Right. And again, back to our point, we have a case study that we just published, but uh, the, the advice I gave that developer, and then we did, we showed this pop-up and again, because it removed ads when he hit X, he showed the video interstitial and he, his ad revenue went up 400%. You know, if you're solving a real need in the market, here's what I feel like you're going to have to put a paywall. Like, you know, I put a paywall on some of my content. Like it's just, it is what it is, right? Like I need to survive as a business. Otherwise I can't do anything. So anyways, that, that's what I would do. Show the paywall on every app open. All right. Romain said he's in Paris too. There you go. Reach out to Jeff. His LinkedIn well, is in be, the meeting description. Let's do something next Thomas week, says, guys. Touch. Hey, we're Contact all going to be in London LinkedIn. next week. It's not that far for you guys. Join us in London. Reach out to me. We'll, I think Romain's going to be there. If It depends on which Romain I'm talking to. And Thomas, yeah, we're going to be in London, man. Get in touch. So, All right. Once again, let's wrap up the show. It is purchasely.com, purchasely.com. They're going to do A-B testing. Super, super important. They're going to allow you to test different pricing. Three versus two versus one versus three again <laughs> and see if lifetime hurts or helps, all this stuff. And you can do it without having to submit a new build, which is very, 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 very cool. So it is purchasely com Jeff, if the audience wants to connect with you in any other way, do you want to send them anywhere else? Yeah, you can reach out to me on uh, on LinkedIn is the easiest or Twitter, but I'm not not speaking a lot on Twitter right now. Need to work a little bit that on that. And uh, I'm also like 
pretty often to APS, App Promotion Summit, App Growth Summit, and different conferences here and there. We, um, well, we are uh, all the continents almost all the time. There's always something running. And uh, we have two things that the Subscription League, which is our podcast where we invite yeah, uh, great yeah. minds. And I think we have one right there. Who's that guy? It's an old picture. Look, I'm, look, my, my face changed. But yeah, the, we, we talk all about paywalls here. It was a really great conversation. So go check out Subscription League. I've been trying to promote that. If you're on the email list, you got a link to this. Go listen to more expert thomas go listen and to this. we share this. some case studies also on the um, well some case study that the one that you showed earlier on the show we have some mm -hmm. uh, case studies and a great blog also where we share uh, some uh, some of our thoughts so if you like the content of that episode uh please go to the blog or download stuff and uh and download the in the resources uh directly the case studies we have great stuff around dating yes. around payroll optimization around price testing etc so this is krishna's app right oh design Ah, uh, yeah, Krishna is yeah. there, and we all we we do paywall, but we also do uh, onboarding, uh, so you can do some uh, like slideshows, etc., directly and A/B test it also. Nice. So that's pretty neat. You can test having a paywall in the beginning, having a paywall in the end uh, of the onboarding, and see how much you convert. So that's pretty pretty nice, and all that without having to write a single line of code. It's really a tool for marketers to to be able to uh, trigger their campaign without having to. Uh, bother or annoy anybody else in the in the um, in their uh, in their company you know i love it and if you want inspiration they got that too right here for photo and video stuff and if you're out in paris jeff's gonna buy you lunch <laughs> that's that's yes, helpful do that <laughs> i'm just messing <laughs> don't ask for lunch okay Where is the company jeff, thank you so much <laughs> thanks Steve. it was great uh, to be on the show yeah. Hey guys. So next week I'm going to have somebody on my team. We're going to prepare ASO in 2023. Some of our key learnings for those who are struggling with downloads, we're going to show you some of the creative strategies that you have to deploy to really make ASO work. I don't think it'll work. It can't work by itself. We have some case studies on that. I think that's the rare case, frankly, that it can work by itself without any type of big push. We'll go through some of those strategies. So for ASO in 2023, Rafath, who's the head of app growth on our team, is going to be here because I, like Jeff, will be in London at App Promotion Summit, and we're going to be doing a workshop next Friday. We've got a few tickets left. If you're interested, go check out at masters.com slash event slash London, or just email me. that will be easier. And then mm. we'll have you join there too. Great value. Right. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on, man. Have a great weekend. Thanks. I'll see you guys you too. next week. See ya. Two weeks. Bye.